I mentioned at the beginning of worship that the tribe of Dan indeed pay, paid us another visit in order to bring visual enhancement and embellishment to this day, this day of Palm Sunday. We have celebrated five weeks of Lent and now we're coming down to the end of the season with Palm Sunday today. Monday, Thursday, this coming Thursday, and Easter Sunday. But here we are, finally, at Palm Sunday. And you see, up until now in the life of Jesus, he had been able to keep his identity somewhat hidden. But now he knew the time was up. He knew his time had come. He knew he couldn't keep this thing a secret any longer. He couldn't keep it in hiding. So he sends two disciples off to find a colt. And he wants a young colt because for the last two miles of his journey, he wants to ride on a donkey after traveling by his feet from Galilee. You see, it seems that Jesus was really bringing to light and to fruition the uh, prophecy of Zechariah, which is found in chapter 9 of Zechariah, in which he prophesied, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem, Lord, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Well, when the disciples brought that donkey to Jesus, they threw their cloaks on the donkey and they helped Jesus get on to the donkey. And then as he rode into the city, they all waved their palm branches and they spread their cloaks on the ground and began to praise God. And they praised God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. See, when I read those words, I think of the angels who sang at Jesus' birth, once again tying the death of Jesus to the birth of Jesus, where the angels sang glory to God in the highest and on peace to men of good will. At his birth, Jesus came into a world that was going to reject him. As he enters into Holy Week, he enters into a city that will reject him. But at this stage on Palm Sunday, people are still rejoicing, they're still celebrating they're still singing his praise. And in fact, they're so boisterous that the Pharisees get really uneasy. The Pharisees say to Jesus, Jesus, rebuke your disciples. To which Jesus says, I tell you, if they keep quiet, these stones will cry out. See, Palm Sunday, that story, may well be one of the greatest stories of all time. It's no wonder that people around the world continue to love and to celebrate Palm Sunday. It is truly a story of hope. Jesus rides in as a message of hope a hope to a world that is in despair. 
It is a word of hope. The last word of hope that he gives before entering into this holy week in which we remember the betrayal of Christ. I want to focus just for a minute on the donkey. And I noticed, I'm sure you all noticed the donkey at the end of the entrance aisle. That's a donkey that we've used, I don't know how many years, that uh, Sandy Hendrick made. And it's gone through a lot of trials and tribulations to be here today. So it's a, a revered donkey by the tribe of Dan, as it was by Jesus. The donkey, that donkey has been eaten up so many times by catches, mice. A terrible thing that we would have mice in the church. But anyway, and it has been redone and redone because it is an important part of this message that we read and the message that we show graphically. The donkey, and I want to talk about it in a minute because I dare say that a donkey would be your first choice of an animal to ride in a parade. I know it certainly would not be my first choice. They're stubborn. They can be mean. They're smelly. They're lowly. And it is said that they have such a bad image because of those traits, and yet they have played a very important role, not only in stories of the Bible. I'm even told that uh, there is a website. I haven't checked it out, but you guys can. It's called BibleDonkeys.com to tell about the importance of donkeys. And in spite of their image of being lowly animals as well as stubborn, donkeys deserve to serve their master in many, many ways. See, in the Middle East, donkeys are still used as a beast of burden. One authority says that donkeys will patiently stand there and wait and accept crate after crate, uh, stone after stone, shovel of sand after shovel of sand until many times their knees will give out and they will buckle down and fall to their knees. Of all the animals in the world, the donkey is the most hard-working animal, the most humble, and probably the most abused. See, Zechariah prophesied that the Messiah would arrive gentle, riding on a donkey. A lady by the name of Corey Ten Bloom was a very famous evangelistic author. And she once was asked if it was difficult for her to remain humble when she had received so many accolades for her Christian writing. And she replied, when Jesus came into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday on the back of a donkey, everyone was waving their palm branches throwing garments on the road, singing praises and cheering, do you think for a minute that it even entered the head of the donkey that any of this was for him? It captures our imagination that Jesus rode a colt. The foal of a donkey, why not? big horse and steed like princes and kings rode. 
because it was a sign of the humility of Jesus Christ and his commitment to peace. It is clear that the crowds were there welcoming Jesus because they thought he was a liberator, not because they thought he was a savior. They thought he was going to liberate them from political oppression. The Jews have a word they use, and we use it in our song. It's called Hosanna. Hosanna in Hebrew means save us. It was common in Bible times to spread garments on the path in front of the kings and princes as they came into town at their coronation. And the people thought that Jesus had come to end the tyranny and to destroy the Russians, the Romans who ruled them. And they were in a mood to celebrate. And the pre people were really welcoming Jesus as a political liberator, not as a savior. No wonder they turned against him when they discovered he, it wasn't about a political revolution at all. He wasn't interested in setting up a temporal kingdom for them. He was interested in introducing an eternal kingdom. And the people were disappointed. They were angry. And then they were violent. And then, as the scriptures say, they nailed him to a tree. Shows you a characteristic. It's not a good one for all of us as humankind. Those people, like we are, were fickle. They can change in a no moment's notice. Certainly the crowd that welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem changed their mind in a very quick hurry. Many of them yelled Hosanna on Palm Sunday, Jesus save us. And they were most certainly in the mob that just a few days later yelled, crucify him, crucify him. You see, that's all part of the Palm Sunday experience. Jesus riding on a donkey, hearing the words, Hosanna, knowing what is to follow, crucify him, crucify him. And then note in the scriptures the reaction of the Pharisees to everything that is going on. And you know, oftentimes we make the Pharisees into the bad guys, and we really should not. We need to realize that they weren't really the villains. It is very simple to understand them. They were the religious conservatives of their time. They saw it as their responsibility to see that everybody else did it right. In fact, I've often said, if I was going to write a book about people in my life, the title probably would be, They Don't Do Right, because that's kind of what the Pharisees were telling about other people. They don't do right. You see, they saw their actions as their responsibility to keep the faith of their fathers. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem on that donkey, it was in accord with the prophecies of Zechariah. And the Pharisees, as well as Christ's disciples, were certainly aware of the messianic implications of this act. Given the highly charged atmosphere, these thousands of pilgrims pouring into Jerusalem in such an intentionally and conspicuous manner 
as to evoke the feelings of the national liberation was certainly a great risk. And that's what the Pharisees were concerned about, that Jesus' disciples were going to create such a ruckus that the Roman soldiers were going to come down on them. And so when they shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the Pharisees say, Jesus, tell your disciples to cool it, quiet down, rebuke them. They were so afraid of a tumultuous riot that would bring down the Roman soldiers on their heads. And Jesus, in essence, says, then they turn back now, guys. I tell you, if I were to silence my disciples, even these stones would cry out. This program, this thing has gone too far. It cannot be stopped. There's no stopping the forces of this movement that have been set in place by now. And that's why I have come. If you quiet <coughs> the crowds, <clears throat> all of the rest of the events that are yet to come will play out just exactly as my Father intended for them to do. There will be a Good Friday, and then there will be an Easter Sunday. <clears throat> and so the events did plan out and play out just exactly as Jesus' Father and our Father intended for them to do. And it's important to understand that this is no simple human drama of a good man being crushed by evil forces. This is God's Son, God's Son laying down His life to rescue a dying world, a world in despair. That's what Palm Sunday is all about. It's about Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. He was welcomed by a cheering crowd, singing the hallelujahs and the hosannas. The Pharisees are very uncomfortable with this because they are afraid of the Romans, not because they're totally challenging Jesus. He indicated to the crowd that it was just way too late to stop. The drama has to play out. If you remember even in the Garden of Eden, when Jesus is gathered together with his disciples and he comes back and they've been asleep. And he says, can't you even stay awake on this night before I'm going to be crucified? And then he talks to his father and he says, Father, don't let this happen. I really don't want it to happen. If there's any way out of this, let me out. But thy will be done. He agrees to accept whatever his father has in store for him. And so that's the message he's telling the crowd today. He's giving them, telling them this drama has to play out. But the good news is that he will be resurrected. He will have a res uh, ascension into heaven. And it will provide a resurrection for you and for me and an eternal life forever and ever. And there will be the singing of Hosanna when we get there, and the Jerusalem, Jerusalem in the highest. And we sing Hosanna forevermore. Save us forevermore. Amen.